Welcome to the ACC Panic Room. Alongside Lauren Brownlow, I'm Joe Opias. Don't play the Sun Belt. I think that's the lesson of, uh, of today, Lauren. I was going to say, if you see me glancing off to the side, it's only because App State is currently up three at Texas A&M. Uh, much lower score in game, 17-14. There are 24 yeah. seconds left. It's fourth and 21. I think they can about run it out here, but I'm still like, what's going to go wrong? Cause... All right, all right. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to North Carolina playing another Sun Belt team on the road and having a very stressful outing for the Tar Heels. But that's actually, let's do something that we don't typically do during the ACC's college football season. Talk about Duke. Duke football. Yes. With a nice... A nice gutted out win at Northwestern. Um, we talked, Jillio and I talked to Mike Elko earlier in it's the over. week. Sorry. It's over. Did, did App say win? They did. <laughs> Again, as I tweeted, by the way, I mean, Jimbo has 70 million guaranteed. Like, you're lucky he tries at all. <laughs> Why would you try? I wouldn't. Oh, man. I think Texas AM fans are going to be wondering if Jimbo Fisher is going to toss another Christmas tree out under the curb early. Like, you give him no incentive to try. Just brutal. Just what brutal. Happened? But yes, Goodness. Duke Duke definitely had to sweat it out a bit at the end of that game, but they took such a big lead, and you're sitting here like, wow. You mm -hmm. know, Temple is one thing, but playing at Northwestern. Northwestern's not great, but it still doesn't matter. Like It doesn't matter. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. And, and, and like I was saying before, App State um, just upset Texas A&M, that – we talked to Mike Elko, Julio and I talked to Mike Elko earlier in the week, and I brought that up to him. I'm like, look, it's Temple. We get that they're in a rebuild right now, not a great squad, but you still beat them 30 nothing. And for a defensive guy, it's pretty nice to start things out with a shutout. I didn't think it was going to be a shutout against Northwestern, but no. it's great to see, again, Duke established early. Duke's biggest problem, and the big thing that Mike Elko is going to have to fix outside of just believing again, which I think he's done a good job so far of getting him to buy in, uh, after the last, you know, the waning years of the David Cuc Cutcliffe era, it's not get pushed around, right? That's always a worry with Duke and the level of recruit that they can bring in over the course of a season that attrition eventually gets to you. But so far, so good when it comes to at least establishing it early. Northwestern still put up 500 plus yards on uh, on the Blue Devils today, but unlike the last two seasons with David Cutcliffe, they're getting a little turnover luck with an interception and then they're a fumble at the end to seal the deal. And what's wild to me is like the offense so often last year looked inept. And yes. usually when a defensive coach comes in, that's not the priority for them necessarily. And, and but this mm. offense looks significantly better than what we saw last year. I mean, I, and this isn't me trying to throw shade at Duke or be a doubter. I'm not there yet, but yeah. I just, Listen, have we not all been hurt before by the Blue Devils? Have we not all been mocked after our early season hey. with a 4-0 start by the Blue Devils against decent teams and then all of a sudden You're they right. face plant? And so I want to see them continue this. I'd love to see that. Um, they were, they've were they been impressive the first two weeks. Um, but let's, you know, let's let's just – I'm not I'm not quite ready to be like, yes, they're, they're legit. They're the You're best right. team in the state. Look. I'm not quite there yet. Also, when Wake's around, you can't really say that. That, that I was going to say. Wake Forest <laughs> went up to Vanderbilt. Wake Forest went up to Vanderbilt and with Sam Hartman back, once again reminding Fresh. people, hey, remember us. And we talked we talk about They weren't too happy bit. about that. <coughs> they were not happy, happy about what? About they were not happy, I don't think, about the way they'd been treated. Um, kind of, you know, I mean, they were underdogs going into that game. Yeah. And like, Vandy's not good. I know they crushed Hawaii in week one, but they kind of struggled with, I think it was an mm -hmm. FCS opponent in week two. Like they, you know, Vandy's not that good. Wake has kind of established itself. They're a ranked team. Like if that were an, a, a number 23 SEC team going to Vandy, they would have been like an eight point favorite instead of a I'm with you on that. I'm with you, know, you on so that. They need to be respected. Like Wake's legit. And look, it's one thing that um, with the Wake Forest fans that we interact with, I think most of them understand in the grand scheme of things, Wake's not going to get that level of respect because of just the consistency of them doing it. And you just think, oh, it's just Wake, even though Dave Clawson is a well-respected coach. But Wake, and it kind of ties back into what we talked about earlier in the week going into this weekend slate, Wake has weaknesses defensively. 
But then you look at other teams in the Atlantic that might have their own weaknesses as well. But because it's Wake, we're not going to give them the benefit of the doubt that Clemson gets because they've got a talent level or it's they've done it before. They're in the national championship conversation. And, of course, NC State just gets you on sheer numbers of fandom that want to talk about you. And that's why State kind of gets a little bit of a pass with some of their weaknesses as well. It's a little bit like the Duke effect when we saw it when Duke was good. You know, back in the day, not that long. Two thousand thirteen. Really. Yeah, that, Lauren, it was Lauren, like, that was, it was Lauren, like, okay, Lauren, Duke's Lauren. Offense. That was nearly ten years ago. It was a long time ago. I, I mean, nine years. Yeah. <laughs> it just it feels a lot longer, to be honest. But fair um, enough. Fair enough. You know, it's it. Duke's offense was not in question. Everybody respected David Cutcliffe. I think people feel feel the same way about Wake. They've proven year yeah. after year after year they can put up points. But everybody wanted to point to Duke's talent level on defense and how certain Mm -hmm. teams were going to be able to push them around. And I think the same goes for Wake. They're getting sort of that small private school that hasn't traditionally cared that much about football treatment. That's that's kind of what they're getting right now. So let's go to North Carolina. And I guess this is uh, dependent on you whether or not you like looking at things half full or half empty, uh, both offensively and defensively. I will start this conversation, Lauren, by giving Mac Brown, head coach at North Carolina, a lot of credit. Uh, He is now two for two the last two weeks, basically telling you what the problem is going to be, and then the problem actually presenting itself. Now, if you're gonna look at that half full, you're saying, hey, you know what, Mac's being honest. We kind of know what the situation is, X, Y, Z, right? He's not pulling any punches, et cetera. The half empty side of it is, you know what's going to happen and yet you still can't prevent it from happening and your players are not executing, both offensively and defensively. Yeah, and I think it was a bit of a combination for me watching them offensively. They started out great. You know, they looked great in the beginning of the game and then after Drake May's pick, his first of the year, which was not a good throw, he needed a little more air on that one, it was just not... Yeah, but, he's, I mean, he he, for, he forced he forced that. Yeah. I mean, I think that's where that's that's a freshman. I gotta you know I gotta bail out this defense. Let's make sure we get things going again, et cetera. Yeah. And yeah, he forced it. That was on him. That's gonna happen. That's it's early for him. Right. Exactly. But like after that, I looked at the play chart, and I don't know if this held up the whole game, but late in the game, I was looking at it, and every drive they had, they ran it on the first play of every single drive. I mean, it got mm. to the point where A and M or A and M. I'm still stuck on A&M, where Georgia, Georgia, Georgia State was like loading the box up because they knew they were going to run every single first down. That puts you in second mm-hmm. and longs. That puts you in third mm-hmm. and longs. I think State dealt with some of that last week at ECU, where they, they just became a little too vanilla, a little too predictable, a little too like trying to run the clock out kind of thing. And and I think that they maybe just didn't feel comfortable at any time after that because they could never really get ahead of the chains. I think missing Caleb Hood hurts in a situation like that, too, because he's, sure. so, he's the only He's an experienced running back. You know, you get DJ Jones with the fumble. That's not ideal. And Caleb Hood is is more experienced. He can help you in the pass game as well. He's not out there. You've got Josh Downs missing too. And an offensive lineman that starts. Like, those aren't ideal situations for but you that's, as they've an overcome, offense, but, but they've overcome that. I mean, you mentioned the running back. Sure. Amari and Hampton has been the guy who's been the most explosive uh, in the backfield. And I think most people are like, well, give keep. it's a kind of like with NC State. And um, uh, Suma Kar- uh, Karnban, where it's like you keep giving him the ball, right? G- give give Hampton the ball, right? Regardless, um, it was Mac Brown called it. It actually started at the end of the first half when they had a turnover on downs. Okay, yeah, on a fourth and two, that then extended itself to the interception that we talked about, followed by a fumble, right? And then there was a, there was a punt in there, and then there was another football. I mean, they had that was they, actually they when the defense started to get real squirrely because you know in the, they had their moments in the first half. They weren't great. They weren't terrible. They kind of played better in the second quarter, and um, you know in the fourth definitely. So second and yeah. fourth they did pretty well. Which honestly at this point is two more quarters. Well, maybe three more quarters. See, and that's what then they played well. We, that's, season. that's where we get into the half full, half empty thing, right? right? The defense. The defense, when it doesn't, there's communication problems on defense. It continues. And by the way, this is not an issue that is to this season, last season. This has been over several years, over different defensive coordinators. North Carolina does not have a talent problem. What they end up having 
in, in terms of issues is placement and communication or being thrown off really easily. I mean, there were moments yes. during today's game against Georgia State where they were just on it. And like Carolina had to know they were going up tempo and they still could not keep up. And that became a problem. And At then, one point, a guy caught it with four UNC players around him and still got like, I don't remember if he scored on that player, if he gained a ton more yards, but either way, it was like, are y'all okay? Like, what? How does that happen? Secondary, secondary has been the most glaring problem for North Carolina over the last couple of years. But again, it's not a talent issue. They've been recruiting really, really well. And the argument is they're going to keep stacking this talent. But it's been several years now under Mac Brown. They've been stacking this talent. At some point, they're going to have to put it together. But if you want to look at incremental improvements, that's a defense that really could have imploded further after the third quarter went the way that it did. To me, I thought the backbreaking situation for that defense with no turnaround was when they gave up that 98-yard scoring drive, yes. what, 10 plays. Okay, that was a brutal series that I thought was going to break it open. So this is where I guess you can give Carolina credit in that they did not crumble after a just back for a potentially backbreaking 98-yard drive, 25 unanswered points uh, by uh, by Georgia State. Carolina settled down. I mentioned Hampton. You know, you talk about breaking it up, passing it up. They took advantage of that. Hampton broke off for a big, big yardage, and then they held on to win. But I guess this gets to a larger point, and I've seen this kind of out there. Shout out to our friend Julian Council, um, who had uh, talked about, you know, group of five or specifically Sunbelt teams, right? This is back-to-back -back weeks that, it's, that North Carolina's taken on Sunbelt teams. A scare in Boone against App State, who just beat Texas A&M. Georgia State, decent enough squad. They're on the road. And everybody's screaming like, why would a Power Five conference, why is the ACC doing this? The SEC would never do this. And I get it from that perspective. But to me, if I'm a fan of a program, I'd rather see my schools tested in these situations to expose what the potential flaws are, flaws are so you can identify them rather than getting like I, you know, this idea that, oh, well, you know, we beat Charleston Southern today like NC State did. Well, uh, or but, okay. bad or bad power or bad or bad power five conference teams because I like, sometimes you, I don't I don't like that. Time, the way the Sun Belt is viewed, right or wrong, mm -hmm. nobody's gonna care that you won. They'll they will mock you for even winning closely, and they'll certainly mock you for losing. Like there is nothing to really be gained. Like App State, I get it. It's an in-state team. I understand yeah. that it's good for the state. I still think they shouldn't do it. No, great. I see. I disagree. This is what makes what college football needs stuff like this. That's what makes college football fun. Marshall going to Notre Dame was great. I love that. Yeah, going to Notre Dame. Yeah, going to Notre Dame, not Notre Dame going to Marshall. Do you yeah. see the difference? And that's yeah, what I'm difference. saying. Like the ACC, the AC, and they all do it. Virginia Tech did it this year. Mm -hmm. It only hurts you. It can only hurt you. It can never help you. <laughs> It can never help. Tell me how it can help you. Oh, what? If you win like 60 to nothing, maybe if, if, against a team like App? Yes. Look, but all, that's about it. it all I'm saying is, you. all I'm saying is that Jim Phillips needs to think, you're talking about new revenue streams. What do we know about the, the Sun Belt? They call it the Fun Belt, fun right? Belt. It's good, I love fun the sun football. Belt. This Everybody loves shade. the Sun Belt. So you, this is the alliance. This is the alliance that the ACC needs. You partner up with the Sun Belt. You turn the ACC network into the Axon network, get it? Action network. Well, actually, no, I bet you Darren Ravel would not like that. So, you know, you know what? If they keep going to teams like Sunbelt teams and an ODU and whoever else and either losing or flirting with it, yeah. they'll end up needing to like incorporate with the Sunbelt because they'll have no more money. So, yeah, maybe that's and the that's case. the thing, maybe like, that's, that's the reality of today. Like, yes, these games are cool. I'm not disagreeing with anybody, but look at where the ACC is in terms of a television product and mm. where it seems to be valued right now. Do you think anybody, like, this doesn't help in that way? It just does not. And, and they take early perception hits that they can never recover from. Now, I actually think the ACC had a pretty good first couple of weeks, really, all things considered. They have. And in, in the grand scheme of things, they have. And as of this recording, it's I don't know. Not have for lack hit. of trying, though. I don't have the pit. Oh, and by the way, it's like the Mariah Carey gif when it comes to Notre Dame happened today with Marsha. Like, we don't know her. We no, yeah. <laughs> We don't know her. Oh, we don't I know said, her. I was like, man. Yeah, I know. That certainly makes UNC uh, hosting Notre Dame in two weeks slightly that's more. That's two weeks. Because you've got yeah. the immovable force, you know. Well, I'll say battle. this. I tweeted this out. You know, I retweeted our guy, Brian Barber. Like, 
at the very least with North Carolina, you know you're going to get something that's going to be messy at the end. It's going to be exciting and fun at the end. I mean, I I have a feeling based on what we've seen from Carolina's offensive line so far, and this is just hmm. my two cents. I do think that they're better than last year, but I still think okay. Notre Dame's defensive front will largely have their way with them. I think that they will score some, mm -hmm. um, but I think that it's going to play out, in my guess, a lot kind of similarly to the way the last meeting between them played out, where Notre Dame hogs the ball the entire game and yeah. Carolina just can't get enough going offensively. That's just my guess. We'll, um, we'll, close, we'll close with NC State's win over Charleston Southern, which yes. – I mean that was a get right game um, after a close a close one uh, at ECU. Uh, Devin Leary, you know, breaks a record. But to me, you know, it's a it's a pretty quiet day when the biggest news out of NC State's win over Charleston Southern is that Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, moved up to the press box rather than being on the field, and that Dave Dorn wanted that to happen so they could better see the field. I mean, I don't disagree with that. Like, yeah, I don't disagree with it either. It, I think I mean, Phil Long goes on the field for Carolina, yeah. but. I feel like, and maybe more and more offensive coordinators are, but I feel like you don't typically, like certainly at the pro level, you never see them on the field. You always see them like surveying everything yeah. from up top and on the phone with their quarterbacks and whatever. I don't think it's the worst idea for sure. Probably not. It's probably not. So the ACC, pretty decent weekend. Although do I have, do you have the Pitt Tennessee score? Well, Pitt's on their you? third quarterback and I'm pretty I sure. I know. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that's not going to end well for the Panthers, regardless. But I will check the score, and uh, yeah, now it's it's buffering. Oh, 27-20. Actually, still 27-20 Tennessee with 3:19 to go. So okay. And Pitt has the ball second and goal, so maybe. Actually, that doesn't say maybe. anything good about the SEC if we're being real. Like, really, we can talk about the fact that the SEC has kind of not had a very good first two weeks. No, actually, uh, what we'll close on, uh, since you're shadow AP voter, uh, Joe Giglio. Um, I haven't, for the record, people, because I still get at, at I know. I am I know. not voting this year. I've passed that off to Giglio, and I have not. Had input. I have not told him to vote for anyone. You're not shot. You're not a shot. You're not. Ever. It would have been my uh, UTSA Roadrunners, and I know Julia would never vote for them. So <laughs> that's fine. So that's is right. the so uh, and a lot of NC State fans have asked this question based on uh, Alabama's scare at Texas. So they're going to drop five spots. Are we comparing? Uh, State no Alabama. Alabama and NC State are the same thing. Right, and Texas and ECU, same thing, right? Same thing. Same exact. Hey, it's a ranked team against an unranked they, opponent, and they escaped. Are they going to drop five spots? They'll take a ding, a little. Of course bit. they will. I mean, I mean you they know, probably won't Georgia be. They probably won't be number one. But frankly, Georgia probably already should have been there. Probably, so, probably. You know, I mean, anyway, that's, that's that's all that's going to happen. Like, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the ACC Panic Room. We'll see you all. Got you. We'll see you all midweek.